Taz Taylor from Internet Money, man. Nice to meet you. How are you and uh, where are you? I assume you're at your the, the, the Internet Money Mansion, right? <laughs> yeah. Which it is, um, by the way. It, uh, yeah, it, technically, yeah. I'm good. I'm in L.A. Uh, I'm living life, man. Beautiful. How has quarantine life treated you because it's been such a bizarre year, man? Uh, a lot of people had, like, bad 2020s. I had a good 2020. Uh, I, I did an album. Lemonade's going crazy with Don Navin Gunna. Uh, I lost like 60 pounds. I got a girl. <laughs> I'm, in a, I'm in a good headspace. I'm good. I'm healthy. I'm happy. This is the greatest year ever for you, aside from, you know, the random, the, the world going crazy. But Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the corona thing's about. I don't go out into the public, so. All right, you're know. a homebody like me. Nice. Well, Taz yeah. Taylor hanging out, you guys. Of course, debut album Before the Storm came out, like you said. Uh, yeah, I think it was August 2020. Uh, this is a loaded question. What else are you working on? Because I know you're working with you, you, God, you're, you work, you work with so many people. I don't know how many artists you're working with on a daily. What's, yeah. what's next for you? Internet money. Um, we're working on a second album right now. Uh, just kind of starting the process of that. Building out another home studio, working with newer artists like Drew Kenji, Alec Wigdahl, Lil Spirit, Ty Fontaine that I, that I signed. Um, yeah, man, looking for a house in Miami right now. Probably going to move to Miami, switching it up. So just different things, man. New life. So should I put a put an offer down on your house? Yeah, you can uh, have y'all can have this one. Just <laughs> just know that the DoorDash and Postmate drivers will swear up and down that you're a part of Internet Money forever. Question just off the top, because people are going to ask me, what is Internet Money? And let me just here's what I get how I perceive it. It's basically a label, a one stop shop. For an artist, if an artist signs with you, that's all they need. Basically, you guys do everything top to bottom. Is that basically? You know, am I wrong or right? Nah, you're you're correct. Internet money is basically just like a collective. We're producers, we're artists, we're engineers, like everything. And um, yeah, man, we, we work with a lot of artists. We we brought up a lot of artists like Juice World, Ian Dior, Lil Tecca, Trevor Daniel, a bunch of artists like that. And we've been making hits for the past couple of years. This thing's annoying. <laughs> Somebody's drilling a hole in his backyard. There's that going on. It's crazy. Yeah, that's <laughs> going on. That's what Internet Money is about. A lot of drillers <laughs> around here. What are fans of Internet Money like? Because, well, you were telling me off air that, you know, people show up at the house. They have, you know, these, uh, they, they, all the demos. And they, what what are these, what are your fans like? Uh, fans are cool. They're always like, just, man, you, we, we learn how to make beats from you guys. Or I watched you guys, like, you know, you guys produce some of my favorite songs, all that. They're cool. Uh, it's just that whenever they see us, I guess they're weird sometimes and they'll like take pictures of my car or my house or I don't know, just sit, comment like my address <laughs> on videos and stuff like that. <laughs> and you said when the uh, when the how when your address leaks, uh, just it just gets wild, right? Yeah, uh, that we just moved. But at the old house, the address leak through a YouTube comment, like a Postmate driver or something like put it on a YouTube comment. And then like people is showing up and like shoot music videos in the driveways and yeah, it's just weird. That's gotta be odd looking at your you know window and like, what are they doing? Oh, they're shooting a dang video. What the heck? All right, yeah. Taz Taylor, <laughs> uh, hanging out. Taz, how much do you guys miss the the live performance life, the tour life? Because I know you were planning on doing uh, an internet money festival, I believe in Jacksonville. Uh, yeah. That got put on hold as well as everything. How much do you guys miss the tour life and the road life and tour plans for 21 and beyond? Um, I haven't been on tour as an artist, been on tour as a DJ. Uh, we were supposed to do it this year, do some touring, do some stuff like that. Didn't happen. 2021 is going to be fire. Um, going to put out some more music before we go on tour or whatever. So people got some more stuff to listen to. It's going to be fire though. Dude, I read this interview with Variety. A couple of quotes really caught me. One of them was, uh, talking about, uh, the track Lemonade, obviously. You said there was so much drama behind the song. Everything everything went wrong what you kind of elaborate on that if you can what what do you mean by that uh just like the music video like some stuff behind the scenes like the trailers were going down some artists didn't want to be there to like just you know even getting the artists to cut the records and getting them that and sending them songs they thought artists were on it like a don versus on it i'd take it off just stuff like that you know what i mean but it all ended up working out for the best were you shocked that the song actually made it to the light of day and on top of that became so huge? Uh, yeah, kind of. I mean, well, we made the song in 2017, so it's like for it to finally come out now is kind of crazy. And the backstory, the whole story behind it is just crazy. So, yeah, I never thought it would come out, but 
some crazy way, I guess Corona made it happen. What else do people need to know about this uh, this track? Uh, yeah, Lemonade was fire. We made it 2017. Jazzy, Johnny Yukon, me, uh, Don Tolliver, Nav, Gunna. We got Roddy Rich on the remix. We got Inwell on the, the Latin remix about to come out. Uh, we're just doing a bunch of cool things, man. We're going to run this thing to the ground in three months. It has like 600 million streams or something like that. Like it's crazy. So, um, one of the biggest songs of the year and we're just glad it's out and people enjoy it. Isn't that crazy, dude? I mean, a song that was recorded in 2017, like you said, you think it's kind of buried or on the shelf and sure enough, it pops back up and it was produced around a guitar loop that uh, was recorded on an iPhone, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. The, the voice memo. Yeah. It's still in there. You still have the same, the original voice note. Yeah, well, the 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 guitar that you hear in Lemonade is a voice note from an iPhone. God, that's crazy. Dude, you've d discovered and signed uh, so many people, Trevor Daniel, uh, Juice World, just to name a few. I'm curious. I, I only met him once, uh, and he was a super nice guy, but I really can't say I knew him or, you know, anything like that. But what was Juice World like? Um, I didn't really have the relationship with Juice like that. It was more so Nick and DT who are part of Internet Money. They, they like found Juice World and were the first people to really start working with him. And then, you know, he linked up with Bibby and went to Interscope and did all that. But, uh, you know, Juice is just one of the most talented artists that anyone's ever had the, the pleasure of working with Internet Money. And, you know, the world misses him. He made some incredible music in the past three years. Two part question, man. Biggest crowd you've ever performed for and the complete flip of that. Have you ever been booed? Uh, biggest crowd performed for was probably like what 4,500 people, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Houston, Texas. Um, man, and yeah, it, it was it was pretty bad. Like, I'm I, I went out there and I'm from Florida, so I played Florida music. People were there to see Young Finch, and they got mad because I wasn't, I guess, Young Finch wasn't coming out, so I just got in an argument with the guy. And basically, like, mid set, I'm sitting there just like, get him out of here, like, I got more money than you. <laughs> like, I'm just snapping on him. <laughs> Yeah, man. I don't know, but it's all good. It's all good. Taz, you were telling me earlier about, uh, you know, Postmates drivers and just people showing up at your house with uh, flash drives and whatnot. Give me that. Give me that story, because, uh, you know, and granted, we love our Postmates, but, uh, you know, I don't know if that's the best delivery for a demo. Yeah, I guess just people, whenever they see that we're in that money, they could be whatever. They just feel like that they need to give us flash drives. Like, I don't even have a USB port on my computer anymore to, to take the flash drive, but uh yeah like there was this one time this guy showed up he flew in from chicago like that same day just to hand me a flash drive and he like traced our steps at the studios we were at that we normally work at and he went and waited outside every one of those studios for us to show up but we never went and then the last studio he went to he just said taz taylor's here and they said taz you want to come out here someone's here for you and he just handed me a flash drive and he, ex he expected me to like sign him on the spot <laughs> <laughs> what the, it, 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 uh, I mean, that's that's exciting that someone loves you that much, but it's also kind of, uh, you know, scary in a way, you know, do you, I mean, have you changed up security since then or is it, uh, do, are you worried about that kind of stuff? Nah, I'm a natural Florida man. I don't need no security, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. but, but you know, it, it's, it's good. It's, it's weird for sure. But I mean, I just think people don't think sometimes, but it's all good. Taz, you work with a lot of people, met a lot of people. Have you ever been uh, starstruck? Like you meet you meet somebody, your jaw drops. Has that ever happened to you? I, I wouldn't say really like my jaw drops. I don't know. I just kind of look at them like they're normal people at the end of the day. The only person that would really like happen to is if I met like Kid Cudi or like Kanye, like those type. Of, I've, I've never met Kid Cudi or Jay-Z or Kanye or anybody that level. If I did, I'd, I'd probably be like, wow. But other than that, it's cool, man. We're all cool. We're all, they're normal people. I'm telling you, one of these days when you meet uh, Kanye, I, I I would love to hear that story, even if it is just a normal "Hey, what's up" kind of a thing. But because uh, I know I've I've read about your uh, you know your your appreciation for Kanye and his work and whatnot, so it's gonna happen. It's in the universe. That's that's that that's definitely coming up for sure. Facts, facts. I read this interview with you, Taz. I believe yeah, Variety. Uh, mm -hmm. I found this quote fascinating. You said you fight hard, speaking of music, between what you want to do versus what you need to do. How do you give the medicine through the candy? And I think that's a battle that a lot of artists deal with, you know, for obvious reasons. Talk about what you, what you were trying to say and uh, kind of, yeah, elaborate on that. I feel like once you make a hit record, a lot of fans just want you to continuously, like, give them th those type of songs. And, like, as an artist, it gets draining having to recreate the same amount of song or the, the same type of song every time. Because there's a million different ways to, to make a record, you know what I mean? So. Right. 
you know, fans are going to get upset whenever you explore different sounds or do whatever. But longevity wise, like look at like we talked about Kanye, or like Kanye, every album was a different album. Like it, none of them were like the same album, like 808 Sound Heartbreak was different from like Yeezus. You know what I mean? So just switching it up, everything. And like sometimes you don't always have to give the fans what they want. Sometimes by giving them not what they want will make you stick around longer because they know like they, they can't put you in a box after that. You can experiment and always push your sound further and try new things. And you just got to understand that, like, make the music you want to hear. Have you ever had an artist or maybe yourself uh, wanted wanted to change up so much that you would alienate your fan base where you had to kind of reel it back in a little bit? Or do you just say, hey, do what you want to do? <laughs> so, I mean, like, at the end of the day, it's not my life. So, like, I don't obviously care as much to, like, I'm going to go burn a relationship or something. Like, But a lot of artists hate their biggest records. And they don't, like, I get a lot of songs that we've been a part of that like they didn't even want to come out you Isn't know what i mean crazy? so it's yeah but so it's just like um you know it, but that the reason why it's their biggest record is because they don't like it because it's the most dumbed down version of them and they always think they got to do some intricate thing to like make the biggest song in the world so just sometimes managing their expectations is like yo you can still make these intricate records but these are the things that's going to go global like is universally understood everywhere you know what i mean yeah i asked uh, sweetie the other day i said have you ever released a song that you hated and she says she's got one coming out she didn't she didn't tell me the song but uh it's one of those things where she wanted to trust the way i took it she wanted to trust this uh well-known producer or writer and give it a shot because they've had some success and it's going to come out on the album watch it be the biggest song she's ever done you know but uh it's, wow. it's one of those things where you know given you know i'll give you a chance let's see what happens but as far as her personal taste it's not not her favorite song and I, I think a lot of artists you know maybe you know may may do that i don't know it's it's such a weird question to in and and i guess a weird topic to release songs that you hate that might end up being your biggest it's a crazy right. phenomenon so to speak you know yeah, yeah of course right. it's just uh with people um you know just be open to things because music's not just about what you make it's about it's for everybody it's for the world to accept fair point uh what has 2020 taught you and what are you looking forward to the most, of course, in 2021 and hopefully a post-COVID world? Um, 2020 has taught me just to pretty much like things are going to happen in the world. You can't let that like affect your everyday life. At the end of the day, you still got to, you know, handle your business and take care of what you were put here to do, even when the world's like at war, going up in flames, whatever. So just, you know, staying focused and everything else will take care of itself and everything happens for a reason. And what are you looking forward to the most in, in 2021? What are you looking forward to the most <laughs> the, the this most, craziness. yeah the, the thing i'm looking most forward to is just everything kind of opening back up and you know i want to go see the world man like I'm, I'm on all these charts and all these different countries and everything like that and i've never left the, the u.s so it's like uh i want to go see all the different types of culture and really soak it in and give us more music to listen to man and are you really looking are, are you really moving to uh miami uh near future <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking at houses right now in Miami. It just it just makes sense. I want to. I'm from Florida, so I kind of miss the Florida thing, and uh, I feel like I could do much more out there as opposed to LA. Quick recap: Lemonade, of course, is out. It's been killing. You got new music coming up in uh, you know, 2021 and beyond. A lot of artists, and uh, you got so much stuff going on. What am I forgetting to ask you, Tez? Um, how I'm feeling today? <laughs> how are you feeling today, Tez? How, how are you feeling? <laughs> I'm feeling good, man. I'm, I'm up in the sky right now in the Palisades of LA. It's really nice. Uh, the weather is beautiful, and I can see Santa Monica Pier from here. It's a beautiful sight. I'm and final, final question I'll ask you is, tell me about this uh, washing machine or dryer that plays Harry Potter. What it, What is that? Uh, I I was doing an interview, and in the middle of the interview, the Harry Potter sound went off on my washing machine, I guess, and I was, like, telling people to stop playing it. Because we got Harry Potter fanatics in the house, so I thought they were playing, like, Harry Potter theme songs. I was like, yo, I'm doing an interview. Come on. And it was just my washer and dryer the whole time. But I don't do laundry, so I don't, I wouldn't know what sound it makes when it's done. I didn't know there was a washing machine that played Harry. Who knew, right? All right. Hey, uh, Taz, thanks for hanging out, man. At the end of every interview, fist bump to make it official, sir. Tap that cam. Pie. All right, cool.